Okay, now I would let me go to the next topic, which is uh, interactive work on the computing nodes. Uh, this is, uh, I would say, more specific and, and uh, it's more related to the workflow that you could have at UpMax, right? Because uh, we offer at HPC to end some type of interactivity, but uh, uh, not in the sense that uh, uh, you can use that at, the, at UPMAX. You will see that. So it's possible to run Julia directly on the login node, including the thin link nodes. But this should be done for shorter jobs. We have seen that with lightweight jobs. Yes. Otherwise, uh, you need to, to submit the jobs to the queue. Or uh, if you want to uh, do uh, the, your job in an interactive way, you need to start an interactive session. So there are several ways to run Julia interactively. So directly on the on the login nodes, only do this for short short jobs that do not take a, a lot of resources. You can also run an interactive job on the computer nodes launched by the batch system. And uh, this is the point that I mentioned at UpMax, you can run uh, Jupyter Notebooks with Julia. In order to run interactively, uh, you need to, to, to have uh, the computed nodes allocated. And this is done through the batch system. Notice here the wiring, yes, uh, at HPC to N. We have or we support some type of interactivity, but uh, for instance, Jupyter uh, notebooks are not fully supported at this uh, moment. But uh, it is possible, it's possible to do that. And if you want to use that, so please contact us and send us a, 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 an email, yes, to this uh, address. And then we will uh, take a look at, at your case and, and see uh, how it can be handled. The principle is possible, but it's more convoluted at HPC two. So, how to uh, deal with Julia interactively? So, and here it refers to to some type of interactivity, not uh, in the sense of using the Jupyter notebooks. Right? So, at UpMax. Uh, you start an interactive session in this way. And at HPC to N, you need to start the session with S alloc. So they do different things, right? S alloc will allow you to run the jobs, but uh, uh, the interactivity is uh, limited, I would say. So you specify the standard uh, parameters like the number of tasks, the time, and the project ID. And uh, if you want to run a job, you need to use the srun command, right? So otherwise your, your job will be running on the login nodes.
So how to do that? I will try this for HPC to N, right? And this is the guideline for the uh, max. So at HPC to N, uh, we need this alloc command. And he will specify the time and some project. So it, it will uh, wait until the project is allocated. So it was fast this time. And now, now uh, I need to load the module. So a good practice because I'm doing some interactive job now would be to purge everything that I loaded before. Yes. And now I can try the Julia module. Right. So uh, if I want to run something, for instance, uh, a standard command from Linux, a, a host name. I just type as run, host name, and it will display the host name, right? Which is, notice is different, it's different from the login node name. So it means that this command allows me to run on a computing node. So how can I run uh, some script like the summation of the two, two numbers now that I have a, a allocated a computing node? So I run this run the Julia serial sum and two values. So, and the sum is a seven in this case. So notice that uh, it's done uh, four uh, times because uh, this is the resource that we specified, right? So if you specify just one, then it will run just one, one time. And this way will allow you to, 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 to do some fast prototyping in your, in your code. So what happens, for instance, if now we start Julia uh, with four cores, then it will list the four cores that are available. Let me check one script. So here I have a, a one script which uses the threaded uh, version of Julia. Right, it's very simple. You just write the, the thread ID, yes, and the number of threads. So if I start this threaded version, I need the S run command Julia minus T and four, which is the requested uh, number of resources and thread it. And let's see. So you see that is printing out the number of threads and the number of, uh, uh, of, of, of total workers that are available in this uh, session. So how to exit this allocation? So you just type exit and you see that it was relinquished. Let me see if I am in time. It's okay. 
So this is more specific for UPMAX, where you can use uh, Jupyter notebooks. You need to load Julia and the Python version, you start the Julia session, and then use the I module package with some uh, path for the working directory. And then it should open a Firefox section session. And here you need to do some setting just yes, for the initial time, yes, when you started the notebook. So to notice here uh, that you also need to set the environment or activate the environment for the central installation that is available at UpMax. So uh, if you want to say something, uh, Bjorn, about this part, which is specific for uh, UpMax, Yes, I could say yes. something. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry about my voice. It's I have some coughing. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, if you want to, you can use the centrally installed Iulia. Uh, but if you want to, if you don't want to, uh, yeah. Uh, work with this activate this depot path uh, number two then you can install it yourself and but you still will need probably to build iJulia first and then you start a notebook from within Julia so it won't work in the same way if you start a Jupyter notebook uh, from the uh, command line uh, it seems uh, because then you might not be able to use all the cores. Uh, uh, to what I have seen so far. Uh, so what will happen is that the Jupyter Notebook will start and in the upper uh, right corner, you will have the possibility to choose a kernel. So probably you will find a Python kernel there, and also, uh, yeah, or several, or and a Julia kernel, kernel, for the version you have just started. So if you started Julia one eight five, it should find the Julia one eight five kernel in the Jupyter. So then you basically switch to that one, and then you can run your. Uh, Julia prototyping. Uh, so that's but yes, and uh, I could also say that uh, Jupiter is rather slow on the compute nodes. So this can be fixed by opening Jupiter in a web browser on your local computer, actually. Uh, and uh, there are some, yeah, uh, you see the link. Uh, uh, below. Uh, if you go there, you will find the steps needed to be able to run Jupyter on your own uh, Firefox or uh, Safari or whatever you use locally. So then uh, uh, graphics will be rendered locally instead of at the uh, uh, Rackham or the computer nodes. Uh, so that's good to know, I think. It's okay. So I think uh, we can go to the exercise section.